so pit on here. Yins are crazy. And welcome back to the Yins are crazy special. You are joining us for another episode of Winning. Here brought to you by yinzercrazy.com. We're also sponsored by the Goat Sports Bar in Seven Fields. Make sure you check them out for all of your wine, spirits, craft beers, and a delicious food menu needs for some upcoming Pirates games. Unfortunately, we don't have any upcoming Penguins games uh, to watch over at the sports bar. And that's because obviously we know by now that our beloved Pens were eliminated far too early uh, in this postseason as, of course, they fell to the New York Islanders in six games just a week ago. So we have still decided to have some fun with winning, although the Pens are not currently winning, of course. We wanted to bring you a season recap and playoff recap episode that you can kind of help us dissect uh, throughout this summer a little bit. So let me introduce some of my awesome yinzercrazy.com panel today. You've already got to know them, I'm sure, on the website. Uh, uh, I'm not going to do a personal introduction for everybody because we got a full house today, but I will say we have Patricia, Brendan, Alicia, and Luke here to provide their thoughts on the Penguins' uh, disastrous exit in the first round after an incredible regular season. Uh, and we're excited to do that just now. So let's literally get right into it. Obviously, as you know, the Pens fell in six games, as I mentioned to the Islanders. I seemingly keep rubbing it in uh, over and over. And, and it's no secret that the reason – uh, the, the big reason, I should say, that the team was un unable to progress past the first round in, in what was such a great year was goaltending. Uh, Tristan Jari uh, was not up to standard. He was, you know, a, a guy that inexperienced certainly uh, showed through in the biggest moments. So, you know, we'll, we'll start with Luke here on the first subject. Obviously, Jari was not good, Luke. Uh, and ultimately, it seemed like his woes were just too much to overcome for the Penguins. Yeah, Mike, and it, it's a running theme in Pittsburgh in the last couple of years. I think we've been extraordinarily lucky in the fact that we won two cups with Matt Murray. Um, we won our cup with Flurry early on as well. Um, we get goalies that come in, they perform very well, and then as soon as they start to drop in the playoffs, we want to run them out of town. Uh, I know Jari played like crap. I know a lot of people are going to sit here and say, we need to get rid of him, we need to run him out of town. I think we need to keep him right now. I think we need to groom him. I would love to see us maybe get a veteran that's very cheap, maybe to back him up, maybe to give him some pointers, maybe to get him calmed down in those situations. But all in all, I think we really need to give Jari another chance, hope that he can get us to the playoffs again next year, and hope that he can do a little bit more in the playoffs because I just don't see how we can, one, afford a new goaltender, whether it's a veteran or we're trying to bring in a new prospect. But – um, at the same time, you know, he's got one chance. Let's not run him out just yet. Yeah, I'm glad I started with you because I feel like your take is not going to be universally loved uh, by, <laughs> by viewers and maybe even the, the rest of the folks in the room. Leash, I'll go to you next. Obviously, Jari was bad, but how bad was he? Was he bad enough that we should run him out of town? No, definitely not. Just it, it's, it's, it's just little things, too, like. But you know what? That can be fixed. Yeah, the off season, you know. And I was actually thinking about this actually during game six. I'm thinking maybe, maybe find a new goalie coach. Have have one that has that has a scrimly good glove hand. You know what I mean? And then, I mean, if it was up to me, you'd be working on your glove hand all off season long, and that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But <laughs> like it seems, and I hate to bring this up, but I'm looking at all the goats he gave up and I'm looking over at Vegas, Minnesota and Mark Audrey Flurry. Spectacular with his stuff having like in in insane season. So I'm like, maybe we shouldn't have done what we did a few years ago, but I'm not gonna, you know, because I'm not gonna lie, the last time I brought that up, you know, I had all Penn's fans coming for me. So I don't want that to happen again. But it seems he just, you know, yeah, keep him around, groom him, you know. Hopefully next year when we get back in playoffs, that club hand's on fire. So Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the glove hand, of course. A lot of people um, made a lot to do about that, and for good reason. It was quite poor, especially in the first two games. Brendan, I'm going to switch to you, man, because I'm, I'm curious about your rebuttal maybe to, to Luke and Leash here. You, you had some – not so kind words for Tristan Jari on yenterkrazy.com post game six. And those are, I think, warranted 
Uh, but, but what's your thought process uh, about his future in the Berg or lack thereof? Well, yeah, I mean, in terms of the future, I think that there's a couple ways you can look at it. You can look at it how Alicia and Luke are looking at it, where um, and it's maybe the more realistic sense where you don't really have many options of moving on. This is a young goalie with term who just had the worst playoff, um, you know, start to his playoff career that you could possibly have. There's not much in terms of ways to move that player on. Um, you know, Ron Hextall came out and said that they're not going to be giving assets to Seattle to entice them to take certain players. So the expansion draft, like I don't see them taking Tristan Jari, there are better goalies available. Um, I don't think that that's, you know, a way that you get rid of him. My main thing was, I don't see how you can run that. I, you know, my big theme throughout that entire, you know, post postmortem of the game six and the series was you kind of want to just run this back next year. That being said, I don't know how you can run back the same goalie tandem with the Smith and Jari. Um, it's something against the Smith. I, I think he's a fine backup. I just don't think he's going to be a player that can push a Tristan Jari to maybe have a better, you know, postseason, whatever. So I think you, um, if you, if you can't move on from either of them, you know, you got to look somewhere else. Whether it's the veteran UFA market, whether it's you know trying. A trade. I know um, a lot of people talk about flurry. I don't. I mean, price is going to be too high. An interesting one could be Jonathan Quick. Ron Hexall has some experience in LA, obviously, so that could be interesting. And you know, one other person in terms of the U of A that I always think about is maybe even Freddie Anderson, who's had a real bad, rough uh, string of it lately. But he'd be cheap and could be a veteran that could push Jari next season. Patricia, we've had three very uh, unique and interesting takes so far. What, from what you've heard so far, what are you closely aligned with and why? Jari was a reason the Penguins lost. He was not the reason the Penguins lost. You have to consider that this was his first full season as a starting goaltender, and by all accounts, he did very, very well. We were all cheering for him. And... I think his biggest problem, and I saw it particularly in game six, is that he lost his confidence. And once a goalie loses his confidence, that's it. We saw it happen with Matt Murray. Matt Murray was not only a loss of confidence, it was also players, um, opposing players figured out it was very easy to score. It's very easy to score on a goalie who keeps his glove hand low. They were always shooting it over his glove hand, and that's why he's in – wherever he is now. <laughs> Sorry, I'm awesome. blank. But I think that coaching and also a veteran goaltender, I think Brendan's idea of Jonathan Quick might be a good one if Quick is willing to take a mentor role rather than a, well, if I can't start, I'm not going anywhere. And, you know, obviously Hexall does have some history with him. So that, that's something that, that's very intriguing. If they could get somebody like Quick, to come in and that you know, you, you know you have a guy you know the same way we brought jeff carter and jeff carter is also from the kings so i, I think brendan's idea is a good one but like i said Jar jari is a reason not the reason the penguins lost yeah a really an interesting conversation and it will be fascinating to see how this offseason unfolds and what the pens elect to do with jari i I think patricia you hit the nail on the head and that he lost his confidence and once that goes away for a goalie it, they're kind of lost. And, and so I, I sort of lean in that direction. Well, does it ever come back? Right. Uh, I've seen a lot of times where at least when the guys wearing the same uniform, it doesn't, unfortunately. And until there's a change of scenery, uh, it, kind of a, a different, you know, uh, a, you know, players around him, different system. Uh, he's always, to me, going to be the guy who ruined this year's cup run for the Penguins until he hoists the cup. And that is a crap ton of pressure. So I know somebody mentioned a sports psychiatrist like Marc-Andre Fleury had. I think you, you try those things potentially, but I made the analogy that he was in NFL terms for all my football lovers out there. He was like the, the Nick Foles, the Carson Wentz, right? You come in and the guy wins the Super Bowl and you try and come back and you have all these doubters and haters like trying to put him on that bar of Marc-Andre Fleury and Matt Murray. And I just don't know if that was attainable or ever will be. So I personally don't think he has much of a shot at ever being the the – Stanley Cup champion goalie here in Pittsburgh that we're all looking for. All right, let's let's switch gears a little bit. And Patricia, I'll start with you on this one. 
there, there's also a polarizing kind of view on head coach Mike Sullivan right now. I think a lot of people have um, taken the side of, hey, listen, Sullivan did all he could. Well, who else are you going to put in goalie, right? His goalie failed him and let him down. And a lot of people have taken the side of, well, you haven't got out in the first round in the last you know, handful of years with these superstars. Should he be held more accountable is, is what I ask you, Patricia. And by that, should he be back with the team? Well, any head coach needs to be held accountable. But keep in mind that it's only been a couple of weeks ago we were talking about him as a Jack Adams finalist, possibly. He took them from fifth to first. That That is an accomplishment unto itself. But my, my thing is that we all know that the Penguins are not shy about firing their coach midseason. So I don't see anything happening with Sullivan now, but he's on the hot seat. They're, they're watching him. And if they don't get off to a halfway decent start to the 2021 season, you know, like I said, they will not hesitate to get rid of him. But the thing is, is they have to have somebody in mind. And I don't, I don't think right now they did. They're just like, well, you know, it happens. And also since Hextel came in kind of midway, I think that's another reason Sullivan won't be going anywhere for now. I'm not saying he, Nothing will happen next year, but nothing's going to happen now. Brendan, go ahead and jump in. Yeah, this one doesn't make all doesn't make that much sense to me in terms of you know the people that want Mike Sullivan gone. I actually have a bet with my brother-in-law for fifty dollars that he is behind the bench, uh, game one puck drop next year. And I'm pretty confident in that. Um, just looking at some very basic numbers, Mike Sullivan, 2020, 2021, had a point. 688 points percentage that is the highest in his career meaning that he um you know had essentially the best um season of behind the bench that i think he's had in a while um you know you can look at 2019 you can even look at the play in round against montreal and say that that's a coach that sort of um got out coached you know maybe against barry trotz in 2019 um and against the canadians and their defensive system you know, this one, the the process was clearly there and Sullivan made the necessary adjustments. It's not his fault that, you know, Casey DeSmith was injured. I will, you know, in the moment you think, yeah, you turn to legacy. Um, he's like a career 867 save percentage goalie. He's just not, you know, you're basically, it's two sides of the same coin with him and uh, how Jari was playing. So I, I personally am a big fan of Mike Sullivan. I think that he is, top five coach in the NHL, I don't see a reason or a replacement, sort of as Patricia um, alluded to. No worries. Luke, Brent, what are your, what are your thoughts ultimately on, on Sullivan? I, I think that you are, once again, maybe going to uh, differ in opinion. I am, Mike. I don't know how you know that all the time, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have mentioned this before in a couple of my other articles, and I, I find it another – fascinating Pittsburgh phenomenon where we get new coaching in, they win a championship and then they're beloved by all and they can do no wrong. And I feel like that's the same thing with Sully. You know, Dan Balsma comes in right after Michelle Terry and he wins a cup. Everybody loves him for a little bit of time. And then we realize he's not going to win in the playoffs for us. Mike Sullivan comes in, takes him a little bit of time, but he wins two cups. And again, I think that he inherited this team. I always like to kind of go back to the whole Mike Tomlin effect because it's been such a long drought with Mike Tomlin. Um, Mike Tomlin comes in, he inherits this team. He gets a franchise quarterback. He wins a Super Bowl. And now it's been over a decade and he cannot produce in the playoffs. He can't win a Super Bowl. And people are still saying, well, look at his regular season stats. Look at his regular season stats. We're doing the same thing with the Penguins at this point. We are getting to the playoffs. We are getting out in the first round and people are saying, well, look what he can do in the regular season. And I know that's not fair because I'm defending Jari and saying, we'll give him another chance in the playoffs. He doesn't really have all that, but Sullivan's been there before. And Sullivan does not have an excuse for not switching the lines. Like he didn't do during this playoff series. You can't have a line with Sidney Crosby, Jake Gensel and Brian Rust and Rust is the only person scoring on that line. You can't have another superstar like Malkin and him coming out, having one goal and having a decent outing and maybe one, one and a half games and not showing up. You have superstars that are aging out. We aren't going to have this team forever. And if we don't have a coach that can make this team perform and produce what we need right now, he needs to go. So unfortunately I say rip the bandaid off and let's find someone else that would be 
a little bit more hard and a little bit more um, in depth in that in that roster for us so that they can switch around the lines. Brendan Lauber, 30 second rebuttal. I mean, you know, the thing that I always say whenever, you know, we have uh, someone that wants Sully out, I mean, what's your, what's the option then, you know, what's the backup, you know, I don't see another coach on the market right now, maybe Ger Gerard Gallant, but even him, I think Sully is a better coach in terms of, you know, the specific points Luke brought up, the lines being changed might, you know, that's certainly something that could spark. Um, I think that if the Penguins play this series 10 times, they win at nine. I mean, I don't think that you fire your coach because of that. Uh, you really got goalied by the other goalie and then your goalie let you down. I don't think we need to really over complicate things. All right. Thanks, Brendan. And it's fun because I feel like I'm moderating a little bit of a debate here. I promise I'm going to give everybody else a chance at rebuttals uh, as we move forward. And let's continue right along here as I'm going to jump to Alicia first on this next question. Two superstars, obviously, that have donned the Penguins uniform for a long time are coming towards the end of their contracts. We've started to hear maybe trade rumblings. Obviously, everybody was talking about the tank potentially heading to the Kraken when they first announced their big uh, expansion team over in Seattle. But I want to touch on these two guys specifically, uh, Alicia, Gino and Latang. I think they'll both be here next year. That's a pretty safe bet. But do you think they deserve to be signed long term for the Penguins? And do you want them to be? I, I definitely do because well, Gina has one year left most contract and like I've seen everywhere on Twitter, Instagram, everywhere trade Malkin. And I'm like, okay, one has a no, no trade, no move clause. If he wants to leave, that's up to him. So I don't know why everyone's like, Oh, if you get that, like, well, one, you're not, you're not going to get the deal. I'm, that's just how I feel about it. But with Latang, his is partial, I think. No trade, no move. And I think only like however many teams like he won't go to. And obviously we don't know that information because you know. But I just okay. If 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 Latang decides to leave or however that plays out. I don't I don't see any UFA defensemen or UFAs that would I just don't see anyone better than than Latang right now as a UFA so yeah I get the overall point is if you're if you think you're Ron Hexel and you come out and, and Brian Burke you say hey listen this team is positioned to win a cup this year I think they are just as good and will be in a position to win a cup next year then you're right it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to get rid of uh, leaders and, and guys who helped you get to that point, right? You want to keep them around. But Patricia, what about for, for longer? I mean, obviously, we're really projecting. We only care about next season. One, do you think both will be here next season? And and do you think that if you're a GM and you got your GM hat on, are you looking to lock these guys up longer term? Or are you thinking, all right, this is the last season with them in black and gold? I would look at looking at locking up the tag long term. Latang has shown that he is still an elite defenseman. He's he's still in the top. Melkin, he he's he's getting an injury history. And also, even though he's 35 years old, his emotions still get the better of him in games. And that's something that he he's really never learned to deal with. And I when I was researching my stuff today, I remember Mark Messier who was on the Edmonton Oilers with Wayne Gretzky for years and years and years. And once Gretzky left, he blossomed. He, he you know, became on his own and then he went to the Rangers. He got a Stanley Cup with them. And there's a part of me that wonders if Gino might experience the same thing on another team where he isn't just a guy, he's the guy. Because sometimes being the guy is enough to, you know, get things started again. So that, if I was a GM, I would lean more to signing Latang long term than Malkin at this point. Interesting, uh, Luke. I'll come to you next. You're you're Ron Hextall, and you're sitting there going through each player evaluation this year, determining, all right, one, do we just let this be? Do we try and restructure him, or three, do we potentially cut our ties? Where do you fall with both of those players? Well, as Hextall made it clear, um, we are in a win-now mentality, and he doesn't want to get rid of 
Tang or Malkin right now. And, you know, it's already kind of a done deal. So I'm kind of accepting the fact that Latang and Malkin are both going to be Penguins throughout next season. Um, I did have a change of heart as uh, that article I had written with Brendan uh, a couple months back uh, about the Kraken uh, expansion. I did want to see Latang go. Um, I wish Malkin would waive his no trade clause to maybe uh, take that chance, kind of like Patricia alluded to. Maybe he can be a superstar again on that team. But um, again, I want to go back to the fact that we're aging and we can't turn back the clocks here. You have players like McKinnon. McKinnon is absolutely on fire right now in the playoffs. And you're not going to have someone like Malkin who you have to keep paying all these millions of dollars and take up cap space that's going to ever produce something like that. And I'm not saying you're going to get the next McKinnon off of, you know, free agency or anything like that. But we have to start looking towards the future and we have to start getting players that are going to produce the numbers that we need to go on a playoff run. Malkin isn't going to be it moving forward. Um, what I'm really hoping to see is that Malkin plays his ass off this year. He has a great year and his trade value goes up because aside from that, if you re-sign both Malkin and Latang, that cap space is just again, crushed. And, you know, again, if we're looking for someone to replace Jari or put in backup for Jari or get someone in there, we need cap space. It's as simple as that. And you're not going to do it with three superstars plus trying to get prospects on this team. I think the money is an excellent point. Brendan, you're going to have some money once Mike Sullivan is on the bench next season, especially if you invested in, in Dogecoin or something of that nature. Uh, maybe you can buy the Penguins and uh, make this decision for them. But where do you, where do you kind of fall in, in, in all of this? Obviously, it appears Gino and Latang are going to be back next year. Uh, but but moving forward, are, are which one are you more inclined to resign, if any? Yeah, I'd be shocked if they both weren't back, as, you're, as pretty much I think everyone's agreeing. Um, that is the more interesting question to me is in terms of looking ahead. Um, I think it, if you, I think you ask anyone in that organization, obviously I don't know, but I think that they want those three players, Crosby, Malkin, and Latang to retire as Penguins. Um, and I think that they're going to do their best to try it. Um, if the money doesn't work though, then the, the money's just not going to work. So if I had to take one of those two between, you know, Malkin and Latang at the end of next year, I only have the money for one. Um, second line centers are harder to come by, in my opinion, than um, a top pairing defenseman whenever we already have players like John Marino, uh, even maybe P.O. Joseph, who have shown, you know, um, flashes that they can take on the minutes, that they can take on the role and the responsibility so while I love Chris Letang, he's one of my favorite players, um, I just think that it's going to be harder to get a player who can, you know, uh, be a power play guy like Malkin, who can um, still be a very good second line center. He's not 26 anymore, as I think Luke was alluding to. You're not going to be able to turn back, you know, the clock, but he is still a very good second line center, maybe top five second line center that is in the NHL whenever he's on his game. So, and I was more critical of Malkin than anyone at the beginning of the year, but I just think that there's still enough there where if he can sort of simplify his game, I would rather have him just because of we have players who can sort of take the tanks position. We don't have anyone. Uh, I mean, Jeff Carr is going to be retired. Probably Malkin's contract will be up. You want Teddy Bluger as your second line center? Probably not. So I just think that it's more smart to probably stick around with him. All right. Oh, good stuff. I want to remind everybody out there that you're watching winning a yinzercrazy.com Pittsburgh Penguins special. Uh, I am Mike. You're joined by Patricia, Brendan, Alicia, and Luke. We're really happy to be able to provide you this content. And we hope to bring you this show occasionally throughout the summer uh, and then back in full force once the pens are back in action later this uh, winter and into next year and season, of course. And obviously, uh, we hope for a competitive team once again. I, I think if, if we're all aligned in our thinking that both Gino, Latang, and Jari potentially will be back next season, that we'll likely at least have a competitive uh, a team once more. But to do that, there are always some holes, right, that you, that you have to fill. The Penguins did that, of course, with Jeff Carter in spades. He was just terrific uh, bringing him in later in the season. Uh, they should likely have him for at least one more go around. But there are some other moves that we alluded to already. Jonathan Quick, potentially. Let's let's expand on that a little bit. Patricia, I'll start with you here. Some off-season ideas. What's what's going around in your head? If, if you know what needs improved, what needs 
tweaked because obviously uh, it wasn't enough this past season. If anything, the Penguins have to find a way to hang on to Brandon Tanev. Absolutely. He is a definite spark. I, I actually was hoping during the playoffs that maybe they would move him up off the fourth line. On You know, I know that would destroy the BART line, but, you know, moving him up a little bit because I do think that he has the talent, you know, to be at the very least a third line. As far as other players, do not be surprised if – Jared McCann leaves. I think that he is definite trade bait. Even possibly, I think they might be able to get a goalie for him. I really do. I, he, he's good, but, you know, when you have Gensel and Rust ahead of you, I think it's a little difficult for him to break out. So, you know, if he's on the team this coming year, I'm not going to complain. But at the same time, you have to be realistic. He... He is bait, and I think they could attract something good in exchange for him. Alicia, I'll come to you. Is, is it almost as simple as just finding a, a veteran goalie to compete with Jari, or does this team need some, some other pieces in other areas? Um, I think, well, one, there could be, like, that veteran backup to push Jari, which actually I was literally just thinking about this not even that long ago. Maybe, like, uh, Paco Rene? Like, even though, you know, this time in Nashville has been coming to an end, but I don't know what, what his conduct is or what, like, what his decision is going to be, if he's actually, if he's going to retire or, or not. But if he still decides to play, if we can, you know, I would just say maybe get him for a Jared McCann, maybe, a, you know, I feel like he would definitely push Shari to be, like one of the best goals that we have seen in the regular season, for sure. I like that call. It's a name that nobody's mentioned so far uh, on, on the show today. And another guy with veteran experience, postseason experience that Penguins, of course, have seen in the past. Uh, Brendan, give me some – I know you've probably been tinkering with this roster. Uh, give, me, give me some ideas. You already threw quick at us, but what about some other potential pieces? Yeah, I think for me the first hurdle you got to get over that, you know, maybe is something that we're not – like the dark cloud that we're not really talking about is the expansion draft and who we're going to lose in that. So um, for me, I think that they're going to probably leave Jason Zucker exposed um, who I really like how he plays, but he just doesn't seem to have the chemistry that is needed to play with Crosby or Malkin. Um, I think that they'll probably leave him exposed. And if he doesn't get claimed by Seattle, then I think that that's the player that you look to move um, in terms of, you know, other pieces in, in this team I just don't I don't see many you know I think if this was a really deep really good team that um again you know sounding like a um a broken gong or whatever but I just think that you know they got done in by their own goalie so in terms of what you look for um you can certainly look to add maybe a more uh depth veteran presence on the blue line I think the Penguins got beat in front of their own net a lot in terms of being able to clear the blue paint um not really um, the big, the best way to do that. I know that Hextall and Burke are interested in adding size. You can find some for cheap. I'm not opposed to it. Um, but I think that my main takeaway is again, to just sort of run this back. Um, but I will again, be willing to bet. I think that Zucker probably will not be on the team come next season. I like that you threw broken gong at us. I, I don't, I don't know if gongs can't I have seen them break, but that, that one's fun. I might, I might steal that one. Bernali, uh, jump in. I am pretty online with Brendan here. And um, I just read an article not too long ago. I think it was actually today um, that they said the upper management right now, they're looking to bring size into the Penguins instead of just sticking with the speed right now. Um, you know, that seemed to be Mike Sullivan's plan moving forward. And now Hextall is on board with this size plan. So, um, you know, Zucker, again, is one of those bodies that I think could move. Um, I'm very interested in this expansion draft to see who goes. I, I really thought I had some people pinned, but it's really anybody's uh, decision at this point. And, um, I think if you are going to bring in size, I'm not really uh, burst up right now on whose contract's ending and who's going to be available, but I don't know if they're talking about bringing in like a Ryan Reeves character. So not only having size, but someone that can be a bruiser out there for us too, 
or if they're strictly talking about someone that can, you know, get up on the ice, body somebody and uh, be at the point and hammer on some slap shots. So maybe you're looking for someone that um, can really play the point or power play the um, or quarterback the power play a little bit more than uh, Latang has been doing. So uh, whether they bring in someone on defense that has that size that can really get back there and, and fire off those one timers or if they're talking about bringing in a forward. Um, I don't see you changing up these lines too much. I want to see them be relatively the same as they were, like uh, Brendan said, running back this, this year. I was so impressed with this offense this year. Um, that's the first time that I wasn't really sitting there saying, you know, um, we're not putting putts on net. We're not doing this. I mean, the shots in every single game, we had almost double the Islanders in this playoff. So I was impressed with what we had on offense. Obviously, defense could have used a little bit of work. But if that's the way that we're going, I can see Zucker or, you know, even Aston Reese going and getting a little bit more size in the lineup. Patricia, anything to add to those takes? Actually, I liked what Alicia said. I, I hadn't considered Pekka running. He, he actually would be a really good fit. And I know that, you know, he was kind of on the bench presses this season for the Predators. So, I, hey, McCann for Rennie could happen. Just saying. Hey, I'm putting on our GM hats. You know what? I, I'm already looking into the future of Penguins Twitter, uh, and, and hopefully you guys are still helping out with the live tweets at this point, if they do transition into – uh, a more size based approach and, and go away from that, uh, you know, the, the speed based approach that they've, you know, centered on with the guys like Zucker, uh, Zucker in the past year and people freaking out. Oh my gosh, this Penn's team, they're so slow. What happened? Where did it, this idea go? Uh, and so I'm nervous about that. I feel like if, if, you know, this team already had a plan and they, they kind of went full force into this, this, you know, I, new identity, this faster team that really plays in, in today's NHL. And for, for, for me to go against that, I think you need to scrap the whole thing and almost rebuild it from the, uh, the, the top down. So I think that's a much bigger overhaul than, than you guys might think. Um, and like I said, I, I can't wait until we, we start seeing people freaking out about how much slower this team has gotten, if that ultimately is the case. All right, we're going a little bit over time here, which has been great because it means that we're still super excited about our Pittsburgh Penguins, of course, even though uh, we don't have a game coming up for a handful of months here. So I'm going to leave you guys on this. I want one bold prediction, okay, this offseason or heading into next season. It can be anything. It can be as bold as Iceberg the mascot. Uh, gets detained or something, or or he or he gets supplanted. It it could be anything. It could be you know Jari is gone. It could be uh, Flurry comes back. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. I don't want to put you on the spot immediately. One bold prediction. Give me a sentence and a little bit of a reasoning why. I will start with Luke. You know, I talked about this in the Kraken article, but I think uh, instead of Latang, I really want to see negotiations done with Malkin. I want to see him waive his no-trade contract, and I want to see him go uh, in the expansion draft of Seattle. Wow, that's bold, and that's why I asked for it, because it is a bold prediction. Listen, we're not necessarily saying these are going to come true. We're not saying that you, if you had to put Brendan's $50 he's going to make on it, we're not forcing that into anybody, but it's a bold prediction, something to to – you know, something to, to talk about. Patricia, go ahead. Well, I, I've, I've, I've kind of hung my hat on it, so I'll, I'll hang my – I see Jared McCann getting traded for a goalie, a veteran goalie, a Renee, a, a quick, somebody like that. It's going to happen. I, I don't see him on the team next year. I like it. Leash, what do you think? A Brendan go. <laughs> <laughs> Leash, you want me to uh... – I'm trying to think. So how about you just say, just pick up on where you left off. How about you say, I, I think the Pens trade for Pekka Rennie and then give us some detail about why. Well, actually, actually, you know what? Never mind. Sit or win the Rocket. Next year. Say it again. I missed it. Sit or win the Rocket Richard next season. Okay. That, that's that, a good one. That's bold. That's yeah, bold. Okay. <laughs> okay. That, that is bold. No question about it. Brandon, go ahead. Finish it up. All right. Mine is Alexander Ovechkin is a UFA. <laughs> we'll probably. No! All right, no! show is canceled. The show has been canceled, and we'll see ya. You don't want to see. You don't want to see Sidney Crosby sauce over like eighty-seven assists to Al uh, Alexander Ovechkin all season. I would love that, but obviously, you know. Asking for a bold prediction, that is my boldest. Well, you know what? Uh, uh, we don't call bold. 
We don't call us Yinzer crazy for nothing. Uh, anytime <laughs> I get to say that line, I do it. There's a reason that, that we are crazy and Yinzer are crazy as well. All right, that's a wrap on winning. It's been a great time. I want to thank all of you guys for joining me. Uh, I want to remind everybody out there that the coverage does not stop here. Of course, penguin season and hockey season is all year round, ladies and gentlemen. If you didn't know that on yinzercrazy.com, we will still have occasional pieces from this team right here and a show every once in a while if there are ever any hot news, uh, breaking items, and things of that nature to jump on here and discuss. Can't wait to do it. Brendan's going to be $50 richer next year. Uh, Patricia is, is still going to be rooting for her buckos. Uh, and, and, and Luke, what, what's Luke going to be? Maybe playoff year next year? What do you think? I mean, I started it a little bit, and now I'm just, like, disappointed. So I'm, I'm keeping it going for the avalanche. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. And I like Leash's prediction. I think Pecorino would make a great penguin. You guys make a great team. It's been a lot of fun here. Thank you for watching us. Subscribe to us on YouTube over at Yins or Crazy. And, of course, follow us on Twitter at Yins or Crazy Show, where you'll see a lot of their work. All right. For everybody, I'm Mike. We'll see you next time. Let's go, Pens.